Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Football Daily Weekly. Good to have you here. I'm joined by Lawrence and uh, Roman Kemp from Pitch Invasion TV. Thanks for joining us, Roman. Uh, what are the five things we learned this weekend? Well, uh, first up, Manchester United were beaten 3 1 by Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. In previous seasons, Manchester United would have picked up a point. They might have even won that, that kind of game. When they went into it yesterday, people were thinking, oh, damage, limitation perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, what did you make of the game? Um, I thought it was, you know, a very. I thought it was a very good performance from Chelsea, mm. and I think it was very a Mourinho performance. And we can't think, take that away from Chelsea. No, you can't take that away. And Mourinho thrives on games like this. Mm. Uh, and I just think Eto had a fantastic game as well, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, that's like, rare, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Eto was due, yeah. one, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is tricky to watch a side go from being title winners to such disparacy in such a short space of time. Yeah. And I think that's what probably strikes Manchester United fans most is the, the becoming mortal, if you like. Mm. You go from that untouchable nature of Sir Alex Ferguson to the highly touchable nature of uh, <laughs> David yeah. Moyes. Like what you've done there. Um, and I think that he also he's inherited a squad where there are a couple of people that he will have to phase out. Somewhere. Where do Manchester United need to strengthen then? The transfer window um, is upon us. Um, uh, Roman, any thoughts? I think their defence was really exposed yes. yesterday. I would definitely say that they need they need something for the fans to be excited about. I mean, look what the Özil signing did to Arsenal. Absolutely. You know, a, a, a superstar signing can lift not only the team on the pitch, the team behind the pitch. At the moment, the only player they're looking at is Yanisai. And as good as Yanisai is now... It's a lot for an 18-year-old. Yeah, it's too much for, for an 18-year-old that, that's you know, only started at like a handful of games mm. this season. The title race is between three teams. Manchester United. <laughs> 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 Manchester United and a couple of others. Uh, but, well, Arsenal are still top, Manchester City and Chelsea are right behind them. And they're breaking away, aren't they? A few mm. weeks ago, I mean, even Everton were in the mix. Yeah. Liverpool, perhaps. Um, uh, it's a little bit of laughter there for them. <laughs> Um, not from me. Um, uh, so, three teams, Lawrence, are we thinking that? Do we agree with um, what most people are saying? It's a tricky one, isn't it? It is a tricky one. We well, can come back to you. My point is, I don't like writing people off, I like writing people in. Right. You know, I think it's stupid to write someone off because the they, Arsenal are an extremely talented side with a lot of players coming back from injury and people coming in to refresh that squad. Santi Cazorla is on a great run of uh, mm. form with the, the wonderful goals at the weekend. Mm. And I, I think that they're a very talented team. I think that the strength of the two other sides will mean that Arsenal will marginally miss out. I don't think the title is going to be decided by 13, 14 points this season, and I think it'll be very tight. If Arsenal do miss out, it'll be by a couple of points. City look too good for me at the moment. Seeing, seeing their games this season, I haven't seen a side pass the ball around like that and have the danger uh, to opponents than someone like Barcelona three or four years ago. I think Arsenal are gonna gonna hold out and they're gonna wow. do it. Don't yeah, I do, jinx yeah. it. Don't jinx it. Don't, whatever I say. I think now. Arsenal too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, everybody. No, I, uh, I I think Arsenal might just do it. So um, so, so so there we are. The race for fourth spot is on very much. So Liverpool are currently there. Spurs apparently not having the greatest of seasons are on the same points as Liverpool, who are having a pretty decent season. Everton are still in there. Game in hand. Dare I say Manchester United? Yeah, I mean, you have, yeah, mathematically. Newcastle United? Uh, you get a bit far. OK. <laughs> uh, Lawrence, who do you fancy to nick the fourth spot? Do you think Sh uh, Sherwood's going to do it? I think Sherwood will be found out tactically in too many games. It's great to win again. It's great to have this run. I think Liverpool went on a run in December, uh, which most people fawned over them for. Mm. It was a run... Uh, against a, a lot of sides that weren't the best sides in the table. Arguably, they were lower in the table. Um, and Spurs have been on a similar run recently. It's time for us to fawn over them. Everton and Liverpool, I think, are the two contenders there. Mm. And if United can get a win, one more win, and bring themselves at least within three points of Liverpool and Everton, then I, I'd say then they're in with the chances. I, I, I can't see a team uh, past Liverpool. I think Suarez is the player to get them back into the Champions League. Spurs, uh, I personally think the team on paper isn't good enough to mm. beat Liverpool to four spot. Yeah. Um, but the only chance they have is to keep the momentum going. Sure. Uh, well, I think the general consensus is Liverpool uh, for that fourth spot.
Let's go abroad. Let's go to Spain. The La oh, Liga let's. title race is hotting up, ladies and gentlemen. This is a three-horse uh, title race, which is fantastic to see. We're used to seeing the two-horse uh, yeah, title two race in, in Spain. Um, or a two-horse race, should I say. Mm. Um, but Atletico Madrid, they, they were so unlucky against Sevilla. If they'd have yeah. won that, they'd have topped the league for the first time in goodness knows how long. Mm. Uh, but they failed uh, and, and only got a point at home into Sevilla, right? Yeah, now. I mean, I think, you know, first things first, what Diego's done at Atletico. Diego Simeone is marvellous. Is just unbelievable. Mm. Uh, it's an amazing race. I just think stats will show that Barcelona will still come out on top at the end of the day. We're still going for Barcelona? Yeah. Oh, I, st I don't think they're the team yeah, that yeah. they were. Sure. But I just think... They're still pretty handy, though. Um, uh, Lawrence, who, who do you think? I mean, Real Madrid have really come like Real Madrid. They've come roaring back, yeah, haven't they? Yeah. I think Madrid are the team to watch right now. Because They've got the momentum. Not only do they have the momentum, they have Carlo Ancelotti. Yes. And I think Carlo Ancelotti has had great experience in title run-ins. A can yeah. operate. And you know, I think the likes of uh, AC Milan and, and uh, his, his record in the Premier League as well yeah, yeah. probably speak for themselves. In Serie A, AC Milan have got a new manager, Clarence Sadoff's back. What a hero he is. Lovely. Lovely. Um, and he's got a lot of work to do. Obviously, Allegri's been, been sacked after three and a half years in charge. Um, Milan are in mid tables, so 11th or 12th, way off the pace um, of even fourth spot, let alone the um, first spot. Uh, he's, he's got his work cut out for him. They've got a, week, uh, a win on the no weekend against, against Verona. Yeah. But, a, you know, a, a, a penalty by Balotelli towards the end at mm. the San Siro. I mean, Lawrence, he's. he's I, He's I, going to have to earn his money. I love Clarence Sadoff. We all love Clarence, Clarence Sadoff. Sadoff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, no, he is great. His, his, I, I think he probably gave a press conference in Italian, mm. right? But one of his opening comments was, <laughs> I think this is fantastic, mm. I've played under a lot of different managers and I know seven formations. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, I, I just thought, He's going to go into training and go, right, we've got seven. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me which one you yeah. want to go Have in. a vote. Right? Yeah. So um, uh, not only that, but he's bringing in a lovely Dutch contingent. Yeah. Uh, uh, Edgar Davids yeah. is on his way there. Is from he really? Yeah. And at the same time, uh, they're bringing in Yapstam. Yeah. There's a defensive coach. Yeah. You know, there's always been that nice side of uh, AC Milan that have got like a, a Dutch influence. And I think when you bring that back to the club, then we'll see quite a nice change. I think we'll see some, some nice football from um, Seydorf in one of the seven formations. What I'm quite looking forward to is that the, the modern footballer um, is quite unimpressed often with, 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 with managers and tactics and formations and all that. Seydorf in training will be able to say, right, I would like to do this. <laughs> yeah. All right, show us then. All right, I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Thanks very much for watching, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, uh, it's been a pleasure having you here. Thanks to, to, to Roman Kemp from uh, Picture Vision TV. Thanks. And thanks again uh, to Lawrence. Get your comments in below uh, of what you thought about what we've been discussing. And we'll be back on Wednesday to talk about our top 10 players in the world currently. Um, and do comment below with your top 10. So we'll see you then.